This is Reda for On The Radar Entertain Blog, coming to another edition of the 2020-2021 MLB Hot Stove Offseason Recap Week 14. Normally, I would be coming at you live on a Friday, but due to certain circumstances, with calendar and issue, not even enough time, I'm coming at you really late on a Thursday night, technically Friday still. So, Pirates signed Todd Frazier minor league deal, and I'm saying to myself, like, you got Key Brian Hayes who came out as a rookie, you just unloaded Josh Bell, there's no DH, so Colin Moran's going to slide over to third base. And you already had a gluttony of infielders, which is why Tucker is becoming an outfielder, because you have no room in the infield. So is Todd Frazier going to just be a bench bat? The guy's still good in a full 162-game season. I think he had 20 home runs in a season at first third base or DH. Don't know why he chose that as a minor league deal. I feel like he's probably not going to make the team. Cubs resigned Kevin Maven a minor league deal. That makes sense. Schreber left them. They got Jack Peterson, Hayward. Is a superior defensive outfielder than most outfielders in baseball, but we know he can't hit. And the Cubs getting Jake Marisnik and all those other guys are just fillers in center field because Ian Happ's probably going to get the most bats in center field. They just need some defense and maybe a good bench piece that they can use. Tiger sign, Wheel Toronto, minor league deal. Again, they're piecing together this rotation after you got the top of the rotation, which is Matt Boyd, and the potential of of Fulmer if he's healthy, Spencer Turnbull, and they got Casey Mize and a few other young pitchers and maybe Derek Norris. So for them, if Teron makes the team as a fifth starter, if all he does is pitch 200 innings a season and has a, a 500 record below four year array, then that'll be success. And if he's pitching well enough into the offseason, you can then trade him at the deadline to a team needing a back end starter. That's a, that's a good move there. Yankees brought back Brett Gardner. That makes sense. Clint Frazier, Stanton, Judge, Hicks, and even first baseman Luke Voigt. They've all battled injury. So at this point, Brett Gardner will be the emergency left fielder or center fielder. That's why they also signed Jay Bruce to a minor league deal. Gardner gets a major league deal, so he'll definitely become the back, the number one backup outfielder. So that's good because he didn't want to go anywhere else. That makes the most sense. The Indians signed Ryan LaVarne to a minor league deal. He can win the backup job. He's good enough to be a backup. That's his good organizational depth. The Giants signed Sean Yamaguchi, Sean, Sean Mamaguchi to a minor league deal. It's just organizational depth. He pitched for the Blue Jays. They're, just, they're trying everything. I can give them credit. Braves signed Jake Lamb to a one-year deal. If and if Austin Riley misses time or is inconsistent, slide him in at third base. If Friedman gets injured, slide him in at first base. Interleague matchups for now, DHing Jake Lamb. He's still a 20-home run guy in his sleep. Cubs DFA'd. Philip Irvin with the new the moves they made recently to get guys in the four-man roster. So the Braves claimed them. I don't know what the Braves are doing because they have Pache coming up. Inciarte, if he's healthy, they brought back Ozuna and they have Acuna. So I don't get it. Is he going to be the fifth outfielder on this team? I, it doesn't really get that much to the team he's on. Giants DFA, Trevor Gott, former Nationals pitcher and Angels pitcher. If he's healthy... Somebody should pick him up. The Giants just made all these moves in the roster. They don't have room for him. Mets DFA Guillermo Reda, which makes sense because they went and got Pilar and Almore, and they don't have room. But then again, the Braves picked him up. I, I don't get it. The Braves are picking up fourth or fifth outfielders in Guillermo Reda and Philip Irvin. That's where I'm just like, what are you doing there? And then the Rays resigned Chaz Rowe. He's a major league veteran setup man, middle relief guy. He's not costing that much. Penny pinching Rays, that's not a bad deal to get him. Then Francisco Cordero, Franchi, of the Red Sox, he's been placed on the COVID list. The first baseball player besides Shane Bieber to be posted on the COVID list. Hopefully he gets better. Jose Abreu tested positive. Hopefully he gets better. The Red Sox re-signed Jip Bandy to minor league deal again. Organizational depth. There's no guarantee who's the Red Sox backup catcher. The ace DFA, Dustin Fowler. The Pirates picked him up. Perfect. The Pirates get a real natural born center fielder to go with Anthony Alford. Because playing, Tuck, playing Tucker in the outfield when he's not an outfielder, moving Reynolds to center field when he's a corner guy, Polanco never staying healthy. It's a good move to get him to throw him into the mix of guys who could play center field. Just try him because the A's never really tried him when they needed a center fielder or even a left fielder. They played infielders instead. National signed Jeremy Jeffers to minor league deal again. He's been a major league closer. He's been an all-star level closer. Just having him pitch middle relief for the Nationals, who bullpens have always been an issue. Even when they won the World Series, they had to make moves for Daniel Hudson and other guys. It helps them out. Rangers signed Nick Kenny Miley deal. Yes, he's been the Royals reliever, like closer the last few seasons, but he still can pitch as a starter or reliever. He just eat innings at this point in his career. I, that's something his teammate and buddy Phil Hughes should have done 
when he realized he may not be good enough to be an everyday starter. Royal signed Brad Brock to a minor league deal. Don't get why the Mets got rid of him. He's a pretty useful setup man when he's basically when he was healthy. The Royals, again, signed him to a deal like they did last year, Rosenthal and Holland, so you can flip him if he's healthy and having a good season. Diamondback signed Tyler Clipper. It's the same thing. If he's healthy, he makes the bullpen, you can flip him. And then the D-backs, that's, that's good for the D-backs. The Yankees did fake Greg Allen because they got Brett Gardner, they got all these moves. He's just going to go somewhere. Somebody needs a speedy out back up outfielder. And the A's DFA Paul Blackburn. He's been in the bullpen for a while, again, with all the moves they made. Twin sign, Romine to minor league deal. The, the utility shortstop, Romine, he's good organizational depth. The Twins get any injury. The Braves signed Travis Snyder minor league deal again. He is perfect for the National League. He's not good enough to be an everyday player, but he had the potential to be a good everyday player and hit a home run occasionally. He's a good pinch hitter off the bench. That's a good minor league signing. The other two, Hereda. And Irvin don't make sense for the team that has a lot of guys who are similar. Since Yu Chu has decided to go back home to Korea to the team that he played for, like Tanaka and Hiriano went back to their hometown, and some guys are just going back to where they had success. So it's all about the season off season where everybody's just going home like they normally do. Like they would you normally think they would do that? Fine. So go back to where you had the most success or your original team or go back home. And that's what he did as a prize. I think about half a dozen teams plus could use a rotational outfielder in the corners or a DH in the American League, including the Rangers. But hey, I guess it's time for him to go back home and he had a pretty good major league career when you look at it. Now the Braves, with all the moves they did to pick up outfielder, they designated infielder Jack Jack Mayfield. By getting Jake Lamb, they also don't need a corner infielder. The Angels got him. But again, the Angels are set at third base and first base, so I don't know what they're doing with him. And they DFL Robel Garcia, who at least when he was with the Red, with the Cubs before he kept going through this waiver wire this offseason, is he's a super utility player. He can play everywhere. I'm not sure Jack Mayfield can play everywhere. Indians claim Harold Ramirez after the Marlins got rid of him. And that's why the Indians don't have any guarantee of their outfield. Okay? That's why they went and got, you know, Rosario, and they still got Macha- Oscar Mach- Machado. So the point is, they don't have a guarantee. So he could maybe make the team as a backup out for their, with a bunch of other guys on their team. Mets signed Caleb Joseph minor league deal again. Now, yeah, they got McCann, but you need a really good backup because they've been relying on guys like Rene Rivera and guys like Tomas Nito and other guys you're just not really sure about. So Caleb Joseph has been a major league backup catcher, handle a pitching staff, doesn't cost you that much. That's a good idea. Blue Jays pick up Tommy Malone again. They're just trying everything because he doesn't have to be a starter for them. He can pitch out of the bullpen. It's not a bad thing for him to pitch out of the bullpen and get value there to help them eat innings like they were doing with Bass last year and some other guys. The most interesting thing is Scott Kazmir, one of the greatest pitchers ever in Tampa Bay Rays slash Tampa Bay Devil Rays history, who was really good, injuries bounced around, had to go over, you know independent ball route, come back, make the ultimate team with the Indians, and then he was with the Braves and the Dodgers, but wasn't healthy in that whole trade where they swapped him for Gonzalez. And that was like three years ago, maybe, three, four years ago now, we're in 2021, where they did that swap for one bad contract for another, and guess what both teams did? The Braves flat out released Gonzalez, and the Dodgers flat out released Casimir, basically, in that trade, just to get rid of those contracts. And we're like, okay, that's three to four years ago, we think they're both done. Gonzalez tried, you know, to come back with the Mets briefly that later that year, but since then, nothing in Kazmir. There was no word that he'd try to come back. But all of a sudden, the Giants picked him up to minor league deal. Now, they've been signing relievers, starting pitchers, to major league deals and minor league deals like Aaron Sanchez and all these, all these other guys. And they're like, okay, at least they're trying because they have no other choice. They don't have a good rotation. I'm really hoping that Scott Kazmir can help them. But he's also helped as a reliever in the major league. So, if it works out for the Giants, they're not going anywhere. And he pitches well enough. Sucker a team to trade for him. That's a good idea. But yeah, I was about ready to put Scott Casimir officially away in the retirement pile and preserve him in a binder because he had a pretty good Major League Baseball career, being one of the greatest pitchers in Rays history. But yeah, I just noticed everybody is going back home, the original team, where they had the most success. And a lot of teams are just signing guys to minor league deals because they don't want to pay him the Major League. They don't want to pay him a Major League deal because, you know, they're, once you're in the 30s, you're not guaranteed about what your production is going to be. And some guys, if you notice, were tired early, and that's just what it is. Thank you for listening to another edition of the 2020-2021 Major League Baseball Hot Stuff Offseason recap, number week 14. For On the Radar Table, I'll go on the radar. See you guys next time.